So we're going to talk about antibiotics today. Um, and you know, thanks everybody for coming. And we're we're going to put this um, tape this for her daughter as well because she's been dealing with some of this stuff with her colleagues and with herself as Could well. Could I have a copy of it too? Absolutely, to absolutely. Yeah, I'll send you the link. I'll put it online. I'll, I'll put it on YouTube and you Facebook can rewatch it. Facebook and YouTube, so you can you can rewatch it. Um, so the the reason we're talking about antibiotics today, especially, is every time. Winter is starting, we're in October now, and every time you get a cough, cold, fever, or children get ear infections, the first thing that, that's ordered is antibiotics. Even if strep is not discovered, or even if it is discovered later on, about 80 to 90% of the time, it turns out it was a viral disease. And so we're really, really over-medicating on antibiotics, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the long-term effects of some of these drugs on the body uh, that, that we don't think about, that are really the main effects. Uh, but when you talk about antibiotics, I think it's important to think about health, you know? Why did you get sick? You ever considered why you get sick? Could you, do you have a thought and say you got a, the flu? Why do you think you got the flu? Because of uh, negative, you're exposed to germs, but um, I had a friend who was a Christian scientist, so to her it was always, if you let the negative thoughts. Yes, so yes, yes. The negative thoughts yes. started. Why do you think we get infections? You, you, you get it from someone else. I mean, it's like flu or something. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Sunshine, why do you well, think we get infections? I, I can tell you one experience I had with my ex when we were still married, he kept saying, oh, I'm so tired of all the things I have to do and taking care of a family and going to work and everything. He, we all went to a potluck. We all ate the same food. He got hepatitis from the potato salad that was no. brought. But we you did didn't. not. Yes. And he was yes. sick as can be, and he did not have to take care of the family nor go to work. And I really feel that um, sometimes we need a break, and we won't allow no, ourselves right. Right. to do that's it. Right. To do it. Right. So I, I don't put it all onto not taking care of ourselves um, physically. I take it not take, take, taking care of our yes. emotional, physical yes. body. Yeah. So, so you just raised a very important point. Uh, what the traditional way of thinking is that here's a banana. Here's a banana that's gone black. And the reason, if you went to the traditional doctors, they're going to say it is because the bad fungi and bacteria got in the banana and the banana turned sick or it's rotting. Whereas in a more holistic or naturalistic way of thinking, it's not the banana, uh, it's not the banana that rotted because of the bug, but it's because the banana went bad that the bug came to the banana. So yes. you attract bacteria and viruses and fungi that are pathogens if your body is not right, if the host, the immune system, is not sturdy enough. And, but we forget it. When we get sick, when we're in pain, we run for the drugs. We run for the aspirins, the Tylenols, the Motrins, the Advils. Oh, I've got cramps. Oh, I've got a burning headache. Oh, I've got this throat infection and we go and eat all these drugs, the problem is not the, dr the bacteria. The problem is not the microbes. The problem is us, our immune system. And you can take a shortcut. You can take a shortcut. Let me give you an example of urinary tract infections. How many people have had, women, have had yeast infections and UTIs in their lives? Everybody. You get this thing called honeymoon cystitis. You know, you have a relationship with someone for for intense, intense amount of time, and all of a sudden you're breaking out into infection after infection after infection. Can you see? Are you alright? Yeah. Uh, uh, the first time you get the infection, you take antibiotics because the pain is so intense. And what happens? Anyone guess what happens? You get an infection again, faster and badder, so you take more antibiotics. 
then you get your next infection. And pretty soon the antibiotics don't work. And you get something called cystitis, where you go to the doctor with extreme and severe bladder pain. There's no bugs for them to diagnose, and he says you just have to bear it. And what has happened is you did not let your body heal itself as you killed bacteria, loads of bacteria after loads of bacteria after loads of bacteria, and your body just got weaker, weaker, weaker. Let me give you another example. I had the dengue when I was in Malaysia. And when I was in hospital, unbeknownst to me, they gave me this antibiotic called cipro, ciproflaxin, a very intense, harsh antibiotic. And after I got out, first I got bronchitis. I got another set of antibiotics. Then I got pneumonia. Then they gave me more bacteria, um, antibiotics. And then I started getting sinusitis. And so because I had had this initial um, bactericide or antibiotics, it just, the cycle just kept getting closer and closer and repeating itself. And then I said, stop. This is just making me sick. This is just giving me diarrhea. This is just giving me tendonitis. It's destroying my gut. And then when you stop, your body goes through all of that in reverse. As it heals itself, it takes it a while to heal itself, but then you never get those infections again. Well, is, is it that it allow, it make the, it's making you sick the more, or is it that it's destroyed your immune system? Exactly. It, both. So what is happening when you eat an antibiotic is you might get the pathogenic bacteria that is supposed to be making you sick, but which would not make you sick if you were a originally healthy person. We all have salmonella in us. We have clostridium in us. We have streptococcus mutants and aureus in our bodies. We don't get sick. The reason we don't get sick is we have a robust immune system that protects us. If you were to take an antibiotic to kill something when you were sick, what you're doing is maybe killing that bacterium, but you're doing something far worse. And what is that? Killing all bacteria. You're killing all yes. of your body. Yes. Yeah. And the pathogenic bacteria might be these many in your body. The healthy bacteria are like that. So with every dose of antibiotics, with every dose of painkiller, you are actually killing off all your good bacteria. With all the hand soap. With all the hand soap. With all the, all the antibacterial stuff. And what that is doing is it's wiping out your ability to make B vitamins, to make enzymes, to make short chain fatty acids. Your gut and my gut has three, four pounds of bacteria in its large colon. And every dose of antibiotic you take wipes them out. And when it wipes them out, you get all sorts of symptoms. And we'll go through some of the symptoms here. So it is gonna create superbugs because eventually the, it, the antibiotic will stop working against those bacteria. So now you're becoming resistant to even antibiotics. And we have that problem in hospitals today. So beware. Avoid going to hospitals. Right. They are places of death, not life today. And also, aren't they giving antibiotics to the, the cattle? And the yes, and yes. And as a matter of fact, the bulk of your right. antibiotics we're getting from the non-organically fed chickens and beef and yeah. Well, plants and pork and every every everything. So, so the antibiotics are destroying the bu the bugs in your guts. They are making the pathogens resistant to the antibiotics, with the result that the antibiotics will not work for a real necessity, like when you're in war and your arm got shredded by shrapnel. That's when you could use some antibiotics. So you got these super bugs, and it is destroying the equivalent of a liver in your body. They have the metabolic capacity of a liver, your bacteria. They make neurotransmitters. So what happens when you don't have great serotonin or dopamine? Anyone guess what, what happens when you don't have neurotransmitters? It affects your brain. People who have had doses of antibiotics become psychotic, suicidal, 
depressed for long periods of time, um, anxiety, extreme irritability, anxiety, depression, because the gut bacteria make your neurotrin. They make 90% of your serotonin, about half your dopamine, and without and, and thousands of other molecules that you need. They make your B vitamins on demand. You can't just eat supplements. If you have bacteria that are good, if you're eating sauerkraut and beet kvass and you have good bugs in your belly, they will actually make molecules of vitamin B, the great antidepressant, when you need them. You don't have to tank up in the morning. You don't have to eat fillers and capsules. You already have a factory in your body that's helping you deal with mental problems, that's helping you deal with digestion. Bacteria have about 200 digestive enzymes. We have amylases, proteases, and lipases. We've got like six or seven main digestive enzymes. But if you have bacteria in your gut, you can digest cheese, you can digest dairy, you can digest gluten, you can digest bullets. Because the bacteria have 200 digestive enzymes that they help the human body with. Because 99% of our uh, DNA is actually microbial DNA. It's not human DNA. So you're more, you're not yourself. You're really your bacteria. Uh, which is why when you live with me, or you live with your husband or your children, you're imbibing their gut bacteria. You're eating each other's bacteria. Your hands, your skin has 32 million bacteria on one square inch that helps you make vitamin D from sunshine and with the aid of cholesterol sulfate on your skin. So if you apply lotions and potions and uh, Purells to your skin, you're not going to get vitamin D. When you don't have vitamin D, what do you get? So, cancer, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, all sorts of chronic degenerative diseases that you could easily avoid by getting the bacteria. So antibiotics are, have the metabolic capacity of a liver. If there's nothing else you remember, remember every time you have a, an infection and you take an antibiotic, you're killing a whole liver. There are better ways to cure an infection and gentler ways and ways that shore up your vital force. So what you're looking to do is to, in, you see your body is made of calcium and phosphorus and minerals and amino acids. If I took everything that's in your body and I put it on a pile on this table, that's not you, right? You're not innervated with the vital force and that's what makes you alive. And that vital force gets booted out without your uh, with when you eat antibiotics. Basically, what you're trying to do is shore up your vital force when you're sick in order to get better. So the next time you think about eating any kind of drugs that suppress your symptoms, whether it's pain, whether it's infection, whether it's tough on your skin, uh, think again, think again. There's a reason your body has gotten an infection. And not, that's not because there's a bad bug out there that's out to get you, but it's because your body is attracting this bug. And you want to get to your body, not to the bug. Um, so they're very non-curative, and they suppress. They suppress to the point where you're pushing it deeper and deeper until you get chronic degenerative disease. You get osteoporosis because you don't have enough vitamin D. You get cancer. You get... Uh, um, elementary canal gastric disease, you know, diseases of the intestines, and we have an epidemic um, with the antibiotics that are going into us from the food, from the water, from the courses that an average American takes, about eight courses of antibiotics are administered to people per year. So if you and I are not eating any, that means someone is getting 16 or 32. <laughs> How many antibiotics did you each get in the last year? Mm. Any? Zillion. Any? One? No. None? It takes time to recover from those. Time mm -hmm. and a lot of healing and a lot of preparation. And we'll go through that as well. But mainly, a lot of ferments 
every single day in your life. Whether it's beet kvass, sauerkraut, yogurts, raw cheeses, raw milk, raw meat, raw whatever. If it's something that has bugs on it. So antibiotics make it so that they're not curative, they're suppressive, and the infection actually gets deeper. We'll talk about specific antibiotics. Cipro, that's the one, ciproflaxin, the one that I got in my IV. That's what they give in a lot of hospital cases. Tendon rupture, so it causes your, and um, Tylenol, Motrin, ibuprofen cause similar connective tissue. People get sprains, their plantar fasciitis, these are all painkillers. So why does your body have pain? Anyone guess? Tell us to do something. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a warning signal. And it's not just a warning signal. When there is localized pain, your body's immune defenses are rushing there, and cytokines are moving here, your lymphocytes are moving here, and they're healing that wound, that pain, that source of pain. Same with headaches? Same with headaches. The minute you eat a painkiller for a headache, you're going to move that headache deeper and have it turn into chronic, to very toxic kind of disease. That's what happened when I saw this nutritionist. Mm -hmm. I was taking a lot of painkillers. I had a lot of headaches I ah, all yes. my life. Yes. And um, I was just taking the painkillers. And she said, don't take any more. Good and, for her. And I haven't had any more headaches. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're causing them, yes. It's a vicious cycle. I would recommend homeopathics for migraines. That's what she gave me. She oh. gave me homeopathics. Awesome. I yeah. love her already. <laughs> Uh, but what's happening is with painkillers and antibiotics and other mainly allopathic drugs, you're suppressing the symptoms, but you're increasing the disease state of your body. And that's something you want to watch for. But there are side effects, straight side effects. The Cipro causes tendon rupture, liver damage because antibiotics are toxic, so they're metabolized through your liver. A lot of people develop hepatitis, hepatic failure, uh, central nervous system, uh, meaning... Uh, psychosis, depression, anxiety, you know, biting your nails, pulling your hair, trichotillomania is triggered by antibiotic doses in little children. There are vaccine injuries in little children. When they are injured, they typically get things that look like ear infections, but it's actually um, a lot of non-infectious problems that seem to be like infections. They get antibiotics, the next thing you know, their gut bacteria are wiped out. The next thing you know, their gut becomes uh, leaky, and the stuff in your food gets into your stomach, goes, crosses your blood-brain barrier, especially milk and gluten, uh, milk and uh, wheat proteins. They resemble morphine. So when you have a leaky gut and you eat dairy products, uh, it, it, in their bad dairy products, a chain breaks off, it's called a casomorphine. And in the case of wheat, there's a glutomorphine. And that seven amino acid peptide gets into your bloodstream, crosses your blood-brain barrier, and you have children that are stoned. They're like walking distilleries from having the molecules from the gut go into their brain, um, and that's what you describe as autism, or in adults, it's allergies, or brain fog, or you drink milk and you fall asleep because the morphine has gone, the opioids have gone to your head. And so the key here is a good gut, and the key for a good gut is a thick, thick mucosa. So your nutritionist did yeah. another favor yeah. to you by helping you build the mucosal lining, which the bacteria actually build. And if it's a quarter inch thing, thick, nothing can get through. If the bacteria are gone after just one dose of antibiotics, you're starting this chain reaction of bad, worse, worse, really bad chronic disease in, in your body. Well, I used to take a lot of Cipro when I would travel. Oh, oh, <laughs> deadly. 25 deadly. years of it. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, you know, from in India, I would always oh, get yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they eat them like candy, yes. Yeah. They get it like candy. Nothing more deadly than Cipro. You get tendon rupture, liver damage, central nervous system damage. You get more intestinal infections because now you've wiped out the good bacteria and the bad bacteria are free to mutate. 
and nature abhors a vacuum. vacuum. Yeah. So the bad guys move in, and before you know it, you have more infections. Peripheral neuropathy, serious heart rhythm changes. If you got, you know, in hospital frequently in the drips, you don't even know they're putting it in. You have palpitations, neuropathies, numbness, tingling. All of these are related, joint problems. And it can take as much as six months. In my case, it took two years because I'd never done antibiotics in my life to get back to even keel. Amoxicillin causes nausea, vomiting, rashes, wheezing, a swollen tongue, troubles talking, uh, colitis. A lot of people take uh, a dose of antibiotics. That they seem to get better, and two years later, they get Crohn's colitis, se severe bleeding from their intestines, and it's very, very hard to turn back. Very, very hard to get better. Candidiasis. Why, ca why do you imagine you'd get candida from antibiotics? Take a guess. Wiped out all the good, the good ones. The bacteria are wiped out, so all that's left is fungus. Mm -hmm. Whereas nature exists in a balance in your gut. In our gut, viruses, fungi, uh, bacteria live in harmony. When you wipe out one entire phylum or one family of bugs, you're left with an overabundance of another. So a lot of the kids with autism in particular have candida. They have oral thrush. Candida in the mouth means bad oral hygiene. So it's nothing to do with brushing or flossing or, you know, it's everything to do with what's happening in your gut and the uh, toxins that you take in. Are you saying the bad breath? That Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Bad breath has nothing to do with mouth hygiene and everything to do with your diet. Um, let me give you an example of my dog who had severe, we inherited our dog and um, she was 11 years old, hyper vaccinated. She was seizing a lot. She was having seizures. Um, she was senile. She was dribbling from her mouth. Uh, she had terrible breath. She had diarrhea. And Boy, she sounds like a wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and she was a sociopath, so she would snarl at people and other dogs. And you adopted her? Uh, yeah, I inherited her. <laughs> I, I didn't have a choice. But, but uh, we changed her diet. We put her on a dog-appropriate raw meat diet. And it's now, gosh, we got him in November. It's now October, so almost a year down. She runs like the wind. She has perfect poop. Wow. No seizures. Her breath smells like fresh air. I, I smell my dog's mouth every day. <laughs> her poop, excellente, and her muscle tone has increased dramatically. So in a very short time with the, with the right diet and with the apps, and I took them off of vaccines, neurotoxic collars, tick medications, flea medications, heartworm medications, just food. Just food. Stop growling? Uh, oh, totally. She's so friendly. People... People are, they don't know it's the same dog. I mean, she'll go up to people, lick them, get pets. She'll go to other dogs. And so um, it, it can be transformed if your gut can be transformed. And, and, and uh, homeopathic medicines, especially Thuja 30C for anything that's related to vaccine damage. Seizures, warts, tumors that are, that are of that nature really helped her, really, really helped her. Uh, but uh, they had a lot of, you know, they would pour stuff down her ears because she was scratching her ears. She was scratching her butt. She was scratching her legs. She was scratching her belly like a mangy dog. She was having poor fur quality. And we're no different. We're no different than than our dog. Well, my husband went to dinner the other night with some friends, a restaurant he'd never been to before. Mm -hmm. And he came home with terrible breath. He's never in 28 years had bad breath. And it lasted two days. Uh -huh. Would it be what he ate? It, it, was it was exactly what he ate. It was a cheese fondue with a melted pot. Oh, yes. Pie. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Nowhere. yes. And uh, it was, okay. Eat raw cheeses. You'll have fresh, beautiful breath. Eat cooked cheeses and pasteurized cheeses. You, you're going to have oh, bad things. So there could be other toxins in the sure. food, too. Yeah. And, you know, why, why would they give you organic foods? You know, that affects a restaurant's profit margins. Yeah, of course. Uh, but yes, bad breath has nothing to do with brushing. Brushing your teeth, put it this way, brushing your teeth, you can't get out of bad breath by brushing your teeth. You can mask it with peppermint, but you can't hide it. Um, so candidiasis, diarrhea, colitis, 
Levaquin is a, a fluoroquinolone, so these have fluoride in them, and they cause fluorosis, especially in children. You know, the browning in teeth, yeah, they used to actually put fluoride paste oh, on yeah. the children and they, in the hope that they would get fewer cavities, which had nothing to do with what you put on the teeth, but with what you eat, um, and they would get dental fluorosis. So fluor tendon rupture, liver damage, central nervous, nervous system, side effects, Intestinal infusion, we talked about that, heart rhythm changes. Moxifloxacin ha causes peripheral neuropathy, aggravation of myasthenia, grievous a chronic condition. Eye muscles get weak and droopy, blurry vision. It will cause hypoglycemia. A lot of, um, mm -hmm. some of them cause hyperinsulinemia, some of them cause hypoglycemia, so you have blood sugar problems. Uh, if you're a diabetic, it's especially dangerous to eat antibiotics. Serious allergic reactions, and we have experienced those. <coughs> There's the penicillin rash, um, skin rash, tendon ruptures, all the usual things. <coughs> Augmentin causes water, your bloody diarrhea, jaundice, fever, easy bleeding and bruising, muscle weakness, numbness, tingling, dark urine, clay colored stools. And the question you want to ask is, why would I want to eat antibiotics? If to cure a short-term acute disease, I took an antibiotic, and in return, I got I felt sick for a year. It's not a good deal. It's a bad deal. Um, Longer-term autism, large doses of anti, large frequent doses of antibiotics, combined with a lot of other toxic damage, autism, suicidal psychosis, anxiety, depression, your dental enamel, your, dent your teeth get sensitive, your gums get very sensitive. People who have had perfectly good health, dental health, all of a sudden find that they've got bleeding gums. Post antibiotics. Enamel wears out, and enamel just gets destroyed by antibiotics. Oral thrush, because it's a fungus. So you're eating bacteria, you get fungal infections. Hearing loss, a lot of people go deaf, uh, partially deaf, completely deaf. Um, and so, so what this is about is the importance of bacteria and fungi and viruses in our life. And what you want to do is figure out a way through gentle healing methods, you know, anything that you do that's like yoga or massage or acupuncture or homeopathy or chiropractic or osteopathy is better than any drug or painkiller or symptom suppressing medication that you can take to, to get well. Yeah. And, and, and most importantly, when you do that, you are in a position where you're an observer. So I think one of the important things to remember when you're sick is to step away. Who said I'm an observer? I think one of you said, you said. Uh, you step back and look at yourself. Hey, I have a pain. Mm -hmm. It's on a scale of 1 to 10. It's a 10. Uh, but when you step out of it, you look at it as an observer. And that gives you the calmness to think things through. And it almost helps you decrease the pain or the diarrhea or the, or the sickness. Yeah. Every time you get a fever, can anyone imagine what is happening in your body? Army. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> brum, 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 brum. And they're busy. And they're, yeah, 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 exactly. So every time you have a fever, shut your eyes and imagine your lymphocytes, your macrophages, going to the toxin, the bacterial toxin, wiping it out, going to your infectious nodes, wiping them out. Um, every time your temperature, you get hyperthermia, which is your temperature increases, your body's immune systems get wired up. It becomes 25 to 200 percent more um, effective and potent. The minute you suppress that fever, your immune system dies out. And so when you have the flu and you eat paracetamol, or if you have vaccines and you have high fever and you've got encephalopathy and you eat paracetamol, guess what happens? Your immune system shuts down. 
And these are the people who then land in hospitals with severe infections or death because they didn't let their body cure the little flu by revving up all its system, which is fever, flushing, vomiting, diarrhea, exuding mucus out of every orifice. These are all healing mechanisms. They are not disease. And once you get that, you will welcome a fever. You will welcome a diarrhea. You will welcome vomiting. If you eat poisonous stuff, you better vomit it out. You can't stop it or try to stop it without very dire consequences. And what you want to do is try and shore up your body's immune system when this is occurring. When you have cancer, you know, if you have a tumor on your arm, right, and I, you take the tumor out by whatever means, chemo, radiation, or surgery, what has changed? You have a hole in your arm, but your condition of cancer has not changed one bit. You still have cancer. It'll just pop up someplace else. A lot. And yet, I find even the most holistically minded, the second they get the cancer alarm bells jangle, they go in for chemo, they'll go in for radiation, they'll go in for surgery, and all of these things serve to do what? Suppress yeah, they're actually suppressing the immune system and doing the opposite of healing. And and the therapies themselves cause a lot of knock-on diseases that wipe out your gut bacteria, that you know do a whole lot of other damage and other cancers. And so I would say do things such as herbs. Everyone knows, uh, we'll talk about common remedies for things, you know. If you have high fever, no thirst, no sweat, Try Belladonna. Try Belladonna 30C. That's a simple homeopathic remedy that will help you deal Can with... Can you buy it in the U.S.? You yeah. buy it in a, in, a whole, in a grocery store. It's not harmful. It does not have side effects. It will help you deal. If you have severe muscle injury, bruising, and eat, um, eat um, Arnica, Arnica Montana, and you can go from a potency of 30C, 6C, all the way to 200C. If you have, um, if you have teething children with, who are clingy, give them pulsatilla. If they have severe pain, they're miserable, give them chamomile. You know, if you have a shock, like you have an accident, if you have severe trauma, within the first 24 hour, eat aconite, aconite, 30C. Or thereabouts, less, more. But all of these are therapies that help to shore your vital force. They'll help shore your vital force. Herbs, there's herbalists all over town, you know. Take a course. Instead of spending 80 bucks on a doctor's visit, spend 80 bucks on two courses on herbs and tinctures. And learn and educate yourself about simple remedies. A migraine, uh, you know, fever few for migraines works great. Uh, if you have digestive issues while you're traveling, marshmallow root tea, lavender, peppermint, you know, these are teas that soothe the intestines. If you have a bug, you know, there are remedies for that. Um, you can even grow them in your body. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any chart that has all these things on it? Um, I can put up a chart. I can create a little chart and mail it to people. Yeah, yeah. And especially for children, especially for the frail, especially if you're over 60, you do not want to eat things that are going to harm you. You need all the fortifications at your defense, for your defense that you can find. And um, what I find is the opposite is happening in senior centers and hospitals and doctors. The telling the seniors to go get a precautionary flu shot. Yeah. Well, they contain a whole bunch of things that kill your gut bacteria. They contain 55,000 times the EPA limit of mercury. What do you think that's going to do? It's not going to heal you. It's going to harm you. Enough of these flu shots and people are going to get Alzheimer's. They're going to get Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis. These are not diseases that we had 100 years ago. These are all diseases with exotic names 
that have one root cause, toxicity. Toxicity, toxicity. Why do they toxicity. put mercury in flu shot? To preserve it. Oh, to preserve it. Yes. Would yes. anyone mind if I shove off one of the batches of lights to Please, yeah. make it a little gentler? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, what about the um, oils? That the, those are great, the essential oils. Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is nothing more than going to the rosemary bush in your pot, in your yard, or in your balcony, going like that and sniffing it in the morning. It will it will go straight to your from here. Your, your it will go straight through your meninges into your brain, and you'll feel wonderful. So, aromas are great. Any kind of natural therapies are great. But the most important thing to have good health is foods. Is the foods that you eat, and off those foods, today I would say fats, or rather animal pure animal fats, rich in the fat soluble infection fighting vitamins are the key to good health. Uh, women are fat phobic. We've been told from the 1970s to eat on the food pyramid, so we're not eating enough fats. Eat butter, eat ghee, lard, tallow, the way your grandma cooked, eat lots of fats, and eat ferments. And I have a thing on ferments. So, so the reason you want to eat ferments is your gut-associated lymphoid tissue. 85% of your immune system is located in your gut, and your gut interacts with bacteria to create every molecule you need to defend your health. From everything from the plague to typhoid to chronic conditions like blood sugar regulation. Um, and so what you want to do is eat a variety of ferments every single day. Make your master tonic, which is very antiviral. Make your sauerkraut, or buy them. You can buy them. Um, and you want to line the gut with good bacteria. You want to have a good mucosa. And that's the broth, the broth, the bone broth, the gel gelatinous stuff, the chicken feet. Uh, where do you get chicken feet? Good earth. Good earth. Buck 99 a pound. You can't go wrong with chicken, chicken feet. Yeah, throw them in water and chicken let it feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Let it boil away overnight. Good earth. Good earth. Good earth. Fairfax or no yeah. 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 I used to make chicken broth that way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I yes. didn't know you could still buy it. You could still buy it. I used to buy it in the city. Yeah. Are there any brands that are, that are in cartons that are good? Oh, many, many. Yeah. All the stores carry organic. A lot of Marin producers make these broths. You'll find them in quart containers. Try and buy the ones in glasses, glass jars. Uh, you can subscribe to a broth share, you know, where someone delivers a broth at your doorstep. Uh, I bought some at Trader Joe's while I was traveling. Yeah. It wasn't bone broth. It was called bone broth. Yeah. It wasn't. Still better than no broth, you know. Still better. And when you're traveling in the Far East, they make beautiful broths if they're not putting an MSG into their foods and taking yeah. short yeah. cuts. But so broth. Sauerkraut, kimchi, beet kvass. You know how to make beet kvass? You take a big mason jar, you cut up beets, you put them at the bottom, you cover it with water. Four days later to six weeks later, you drink the brew. It's a beautifully fermented purple kvass that's no, very, very medicinal. You, you cover it with water but with salt. You could add salt. You don't have to. You don't, have to, yeah, you don't have to add salt. But you could. And just skim off the top and drink it. But there's nothing more important in today's world where you're getting pesticides, drugs, antibiotics, painkillers, addictive substances that are all killing your gut bacteria uh, to get fresh bacteria. So is bone, bone broth the same as boiling chicken feet? Yes. It is the same. The exact same. So uh, Andy's over, you know, over there, mm -hmm. they sell what they make themselves. So they make like a, a delicious demi gloss and a beef broth. That's it. Go it's, for it. It's delicious. Oh, okay. Because I can go, I would go there. Cause go it's eat, yeah. Right. Eat one of those a day. That's your medicine. So okay. what, where's the place? You know, Andy's mm -hmm. over by, uh, it's Corte Madera. You know where Handy Cup was? Uh, <laughs> past Trader Joe's. Is that what yeah, you? yeah. When you go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, and you keep going, and there's boats on the right, and the road it's in Santa Fe, and then 
It's across the highway from Trader Joe's. Okay. Trader Joe's is on the east yeah. side. Oh, okay. okay. What's it called, Andy's? And Andy's. Andy's. We can mark it. I, and I thought they were going to make a move that they were going to develop something. Did they have oh, well, there not, uh, uh, California Auto, the, the DMV. You know where the DMV is? Wait, wait, you're talking about a different Andy's. This is a San Rafael Andes. That's the Corte Madera Andes. Oh, yeah, that's the Corte Madera this, You know where Whole Foods and Trader Joe's is in Central yes. San Rafael? Oh, in Central San Rafael. Central yeah. San Rafael yes. is, okay. is uh, Whole Foods is here, and there's a fire station, and then there's a high school, maybe mm -hmm. San Rafael High School, mm -hmm. and Trader Joe's mm -hmm. uh, shopping right. mall is mm -hmm. on this side. Mm -hmm. So you go up that street, San Pedro, mm -hmm. San Pedro Road, and Curves up mm -hmm. and there's boats on the right, oh, yeah. and you keep going. And wow. on the right hand side, there's like a church, Hope Church, is yes, on the yes. left. But on the right, uh, there's it's called Andy's Market, and it's okay. kind of the local market. But they have good um, I've gone, you know, I've made a trip out there, especially because they uh, they have it in, and sometimes it's frozen, but they make like a demi gloss and they make beef broth. So at Thanksgiving, you know, they have a turkey broth. So at the holidays, you go there and you buy all these jugs of broth, and then you, when you make your holiday meal, you have it looks like you've been sleeping all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you don't know where the Andes and Corte Madera are. It's the same. It's just it could be. I have no idea. Andes. 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 Do they have other things? I mean, is it a good place oh, yes. to get? Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have a good deli thing with yeah. quesadilla mm -hmm. and. Um, they had one up in Sebastopol too. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the best. Yeah. I love that. I love that. But that's, yeah, the that's, that's the vegetable. Yeah. That's the vegetable place, right? Yeah. It yeah. has everything yeah. also. The yeah, because they're not connected. I don't think. Oh, they're not. I thought uh, they maybe were just, they are. I, maybe I don't. Well, know. I don't know. Yes, well, but yes. the one in Sebastopol is, you know, apples and right. They have a lot of fruit. Fresh because vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the Sandies doesn't necessarily have that. So there's a lot of food options, guys. So. If you are eating broth or soups and stocks with gelatin in them, if you're eating ferment, you're covered. The, the important thing is to have an attitude of observation. That's very, very important. If you panic, then you're not observing. So you, if you have a problem, so, oh, my left foot is looking bruised. It's got a bluish green tinge to it. Oh, my fingers are a little swollen. When you look at it and you observe it, and if you're a little bit educated on a lot of these therapies, I guarantee you, you'll find a solution. Go to the right people, go to a homeopath, a naturopath, an active, to find the things that are right for you. But if you do that, you will have good health because at all times you're preserving your vital force. Uh, but above everything, even one dose of antibiotics is, can be, is frequently fatal and oftentimes the precursor to a lifetime of disease. But, but if we do these other things, then that... Yes, that'll ameliorate it. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. 